This three unit CubeSat developed by the Technical University of Delft in the Netherlands has been largely developed by students and performed technology demonstration experiments for the space industry in the Netherlands, like demonstrating the thin solar film cells autonomous wireless sun sensors and electrical power subsystem and a radio with a linear transponder for radio amateurs. More to read in this very good article. After more than 15 years in orbit, Delphi 3's mission is about to come to an end. The team predicts that re-entry will take place around November 16th, 2023. Delphi C3 has exceeded its mission lifetime by six times now and onboard telemetry still does not indicate degradation in performance. Delphi C3 project was initiated in 2004 and the satellite launched on April 2008 from India as a secondary payload. I shall let you feast your eyes with this exquisite low-resolution film released by its builders while I present some technical details. Delphi C3 does not contain batteries as the experiments are dependent on the sun. Size is 10 by 10 by 34 centimeters. Launch mass is 2.2 kilograms and the total power produced is 2.5 watts. But as we are going to see later from telemetry, it has only 125 milliwatts RF power on transmission. Its orbit is sun synchronous circular orbit, altitude 635 kilometers at launch, inclination 95.94 degrees. Now it has only 220 kilometers and decaying. It is equipped with an UV linear transponder, currently disabled, so don't bother. The satellite will broadcast its telemetry data, which can be decoded using the Rascal software, link in the description. What does it take to receive the telemetry of Delphi C3? The frequency is 145 0.867 MHz BPSK upper sideband 2 kHz bandwidth. The satellite transmits 100 milliwatts operating, operating only in the sun. Remember that because it doesn't have batteries, so no night party. I have two installations. One, my trusty SDR receiver with a low noise amplifier for VHF and a QHA antenna. The other is my tracking Yagi antenna and Yaesu FT857 transceiver. Of course, there is the tracking and decoding software. Let's see how this simple system works, the SDR. Those bands are from my Wi-Fi router, an unwanted jamming, not a useful transmission. The first pass was not successful, but then I got sidetracked by another signal. Perhaps another telemetry from a passing satellite. I was trying to figure out which satellite it was, and since my Morse skills are close to zero, I used MixW software to do the job. I'm not sure it succeeded because it's all scrambled and uh, perhaps it should be if it is telemetry. Back on track the next day, the next pass, even with this noise, I was still able to decode two frames. We can easily identify the RF power of the satellite, the bus voltage and so on in this decoding software. 
So yeah, a simple SDR receiver and a good antenna can do the job of receiving Delphi C3 telemetry with only 100 milliwatts of power. Now to the other more capable and sensitive station. The signal was coming in strong, but I wasn't able to decode anything. It was trying to get a sync, but with no avail. I guess this was due to the short interruptions in the signal produced by the tuning software performing the Doppler correction. What do you know? I left my system working for a day or two on automation receiving the signals and man, what do we have here? We have a lot of frames, a lot of decoding frames. That's awesome. I want to mention that my laptop is so old that I can't run a screen capture software to show you elegantly the image so I'm just shooting the screen and now we are seeing that the satellite has come into position there we go but the decoding software provided by the producers of the satellite the Dutch University uh, has the capability of auto-tune if the reception is slightly off but you will soon see that because I've selected the tracking software to auto-tune my Yaesu receiver you are going to see that it's, it has a nasty gap in the reception when uh, the software is tuning Yeah, you see the gap over here? Very nasty. And this prevents the software from properly tuning. As you can see, we are receiving something now. And the Yaesu is tuned with the Doppler frequency. But because of those gaps in the reception, the tracking software is unable to have a sync. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to disable the tracking for the frequency. I'm going to adjust the reception to the home frequency and not tune it anymore. And let's see what happened, what happens. The last frame received was on uh, 11th of November so it was yesterday because today is 12th of November let's see if we are receiving any new frame That was a frame transmitted, but I didn't get it. I didn't get it. The satellite is almost out of range, and I guess for this reception I didn't get anything. But I'm going to keep trying because I had a success. And yeah, we even have a curve something here. Roger, tranquility, we copy you on the ground.